Hello there, Cardinals. It's me, Mr. Ernst, and today we're going to be talking about rotations, our last type of congruent shapes. We've talked about translations, reflections, and now we're going to talk about rotations. Um, rotations means that we're going to be taking a shape and, whoops, we're going to be taking a shape and the shape is going to turn. It is going to rotate. It is going to, in essence, spin. And that is going to be the key word for this one. Translations were sliding. Uh, rotations, or I'm sorry, uh, translations were sliding. Reflections were flipping. And rotations our, um, are, excuse me, <laughs> spinning. Rotations spin. It causes the shape to spin on itself. Okay? Now, rotations are tricky. They're not something that is very simple, as, as simple as the other two, which is why it's the last one we're actually talking about. Um, rotations are tricky, so we're actually going to talk about what happens here, and we're going to look for a pattern. So here's an example. We have triangle ABC that is being rotated by 90 degrees. So we can see this little right triangle kind of happening down here, right? You got like a little right triangle happening. This is rotating by 90 degrees from one spot to the next. And what we're going to look for is a pattern in the points. So point A starts at negative 2, 4 negative two, positive four. A prime ends up at four, two. Point B starts at uh, negative two, positive one. And then on the after the rotation, B prime is at one, positive two. And finally, C starts at, let's see, negative 4, positive 2, negative 4, positive 2. And after the rotation, C goes to positive 2, positive 4. So now when I'm looking at these values here, I'm looking for what is the pattern happening? What is What was the the same thing that was happening for each one of these points. We have negative two, uh, four coming into four, two, negative two, one coming to one, two, and then negative four, two coming to two, four. Well, if you are paying attention here, we got, this is flipping each time rotation. It causes these two to switch. So when you rotate something specifically by 90 degrees, it causes the X and Y value to switch places. The two switches with the one, and the four back here switches with the two. It causes them to switch places. So for example, if we had D, a third or a fourth point on here, and D was at, let's say, five comma three, after the rotation, it would be three comma five. It just flip-flops the two values, okay? Now, something to else to take into account here is the fact that we have negative 2 here, but then it's a positive 2 down here. What we're really looking at here is the fact that this is changing quadrants. Quadrants are these giant kind of rectangular things here. This over here is called quadrant 1. This over here is called quadrant 2. This down here is called quadrant 3. And then this area down here is called quadrant four. So there's one, two, three, four different quadrants. And in each quadrant, there is something that's always going to be the same. For example, quadrant one, X is always positive and Y is always positive. In quadrant two, the X value is negative, but the Y value is positive. In quadrant three or no man's land, the X is negative and the y is negative. And in quadrant four, the x is positive, but the y value is negative, okay? So what we're really doing here is when we think of rotating something 90 degrees, we're thinking of where is that point going to and what is it going to be? Now, all three of our points, A, B, and C, all started in quadrant two, and when they rotated 90 degrees, they go one quadrant over. So they went from two to one. 
which means they went from having a negative x value and a positive y value to a positive x and a positive y. You notice that all three of these, negative x, positive y, negative x, positive y, negative x, positive y. However, when they came to quadrant one, positive, 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 positive. So that's something you have to keep in mind is when you do this, you gotta think about where are the negatives going to be based on quadrants one, two, three, and four. Let's take a look at this on an actual graph and see if we can actually manage to um, rotate something ourselves. All right, so here we have this shape, this good old shape that we've been working with beforehand, and we need to rotate the shape by 90 degrees. So this is going to be rotating by 90 degrees. We're gonna take this one point at a time. Starting with A. A is at point, uh, let's see, negative four, positive three. Negative four, positive three. We are going by 90 degrees, so we know that these two points are going to flip, three and four. A is starting here in quadrant two, but we'll be moving over to quadrant one, where everything is positive. So A, after a, third, or a 90 degree rotation, its new spot is at three, four. So here is A prime. Actually, I'm gonna use the blue for that. There's A prime. Done with the first one. Let's move on to B. Again, don't try and see the shape. Follow these steps to be able to get there. Again, B is at negative five, positive one. So B is at negative five, comma, positive one, which means again, we're going 90 degrees. So the one and the five will flip. So we now have one, five. B's in quadrant two. It will end up in quadrant one. So both of these will be positive. So go one and then positive five. One, positive five. And here's B, B prime. I know this looks really weird, but as long as we're following this process, the shape is going to come out perfectly. Next up, let's do C. C is at negative three, negative, uh, negative, what is this? One. Once again, 90 degrees, so these two are still switching, one and three. However, C is down in quadrant three, which means when it rotates 90 degrees, it's actually gonna go up this way. So C actually ends up in quadrant two. C is going to end up up here in quadrant two where the X value is negative and the Y value is positive. So that means when I'm looking at my new point, it is going to have a negative X value and a positive Y value. So negative one, positive three. Negative one, oops. Negative one, positive three. So C is going to be right here. C prime. Last one is gonna be D prime. Whoop. Last one is D prime. D prime is, uh, or D, regular D is at three, two negative three, positive two. Once again, 90 degrees, so these two flip. D is in quadrant two, it will end up in quadrant one, so both of these stay positive. So we have two, three, two, and three. Once again, I connect all of my lines, and you can see the exact same shape has now rotated, it's spun up in this direction. So it's gone from here up to here. Ta-da! One more example. In this one, rotate the shape by 180 degrees. So notice that we're not doing 90 degrees anymore, we're doing 180, which means we're doing two 90 degree rotations, okay? So once again, when we're starting with A, A is at negative four, positive three, 90 degrees meant that these two flipped to give me three, four, but we're doing another 90 degrees, so they're gonna flip one more time. So we're actually right back to four, three. The difference, of course, is the fact that instead of ending up here in quadrant one, it's going to rotate again down here into quadrant four. 
So A, B, and D are all gonna end up in quadrant four. And in quadrant four, we have a positive X value and a negative Y value, okay? So 180 degrees is usually even easier than the regular because you basically just have to change the signs around. You have a double flip of the numbers, um, these numbers. These numbers flip once and then they flip twice, so you end up here and then the Y value is going to be negative. So in other words, it's flipping the negative sign. So A prime is gonna be at four, negative three. And I actually have to erase this because now I'm actually <laughs> in my own way here. So A is going to be at four, negative three. So there's A prime. All right, next one we have B is at negative five. B is at negative five comma positive one. Again, it's doing a double flip, so these two are actually going to stay. We're not going to flip them, because it would flip to 1, 5, and then it would flip once more to 5, 1 again. So we're not actually going to flip them, but we do got to think of the signs, because now this is going to be positive, and this is going to be negative when it reaches quadrant 4. So positive 5 and a negative 1. Positive 5, negative 1. So here's where B prime would be. The next one. Whoop. For C, C is at negative three and negative one. Again, 180 degrees, so it's gonna go one, three, and then it switches back to three, one, so we don't need to flip these at all. And C is actually going to be going from here to the second quadrant and all the way back to first quadrant where everything's positive. So instead of this, it's going to be positive three, positive one. Positive three and positive one. So C prime is gonna be right here. The last one, get that all cleaned up. Last one is going to be D. D is going to be at negative three, positive two, negative three, positive two. D is just like these ones where it's going to be flipping, the three is going to become positive and the two becomes negative. So D prime is going to be at positive three, negative two. And there's D prime. And once again, connect my dots now that I'm all finished. Ooh, look at that beautiful rotation, 180 degrees. It first rotated up here, and then it rotated down here. Two rotations. You'll notice that this actually has kind of a, uh, almost a reflective look to it, but it is a rotation. It flew from here all the way down and moved a full 180 degrees. All right, so... Once again, make sure you are taking these one point at a time. Do not try and draw the whole shape out because it is very difficult to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, that is how you rotate a shape. Thanks for watching.